Hey everyone, today we're finally comparing Pawn versus Lekka versus Perlite versus Stratum. Now this video is going to be mostly about semi-hydroponic media and I'm going to exclude pumice and there's a bunch of others, but I'm just doing these four because they are the most popular. Okay, first up digging into is Pond. I've done a whole lot of growing with Lekka and Perlite and pumice and everything else except for Pond because it's always so expensive and it's really hard to find. It's hard to get it shipped to you directly. It looks to be a German product. It's got a little German flag there and I did get the Lechuza pot also. It's a self-watering pot. I'll try and get into that this video. If not, not the next video. So this stuff kind of looks like cat litter crossed with like aquarium pebble. It's really heavy. I'm surprised how it compares in price to the other aggregates because I ex always expect it to be really expensive. Now taking a quick look at what the pond is, I do have some plants potted in it that I were I was given, but I haven't planted it in it myself. And it kind of just seems like a really heavy mix of perlite with pumice with food already in it. So it's not an inert growing media. From the bag, it says it contains, looks like 3.5%, 2.5% for phosphate and 3.25% for potassium. So those are pretty standard numbers. Looks like it's pH at seven. So essentially I've seen this and always thought of this as an unusable or semi reusable aggregate that already has the food in it. So I'm just going to add tap water to it. Here's a little start. I was given that it's in rough shape, but this is in pond and it has some good root growth here down at the bottom. Sorry for the shine. I've always steered clear of it because I'm a control freak and I don't like that there's already something in the media. I like to start from a baseline of zero, something like in Lekka or Perlite where I know it's inert so it has nothing in it and then I can add in my NPKs through our Lekka fertilizer or other different fertilizers. Like our Aeroid mix, it has nothing in it and then I add in a concentrated fertilizer that I know has exactly a 3-1-2 ratio of NPK. Also, because pond has nutrients in it, I'm not sure how good it will be for propagation. It's really important when you're propagating to have the media have nothing in it because things like nitrogen, the thing that creates leaves, actually inhibits rooting and slows down rooting. And you want more of the phosphorus and potassium, namely potassium, to really help bring out those roots. So let's get into Lekka. If you watch this channel, you know I love Lekka. It is completely reusable. I've used some batches of Lekka for years, five to 10 years, over and over, and it doesn't break down really. Sometimes they'll break in half, but it doesn't break down really. Essentially, it's lightweight, expanded clay aggregate. So it's an acronym for a piece of clay they throw in an oven or a kiln, heat it, and then it expands ever so slightly, and then it creates these kind of crevices along the Lekka, and roots love little places to kind of bury themselves in and stick their fibers and hairs into these cracks where little water droplets remain. I'm failing to see that with the pond. Again, no shade, but just straight up. I'm, there are some little bits of volcanic rock which are great for those roots, but they're gonna wanna bury themselves in there and look for that water. But this is a fully hydroponic media and I use it through all my plants and it is reusable. And just to give you scale for the pond, this container filled is $3. So $3 across all these plants is gonna add up pretty significantly if I can't reuse it. So I know I'm sure you'll be able to semi reuse it, but you're gonna have to recharge the NPK values in this media at some point. And at which point, I don't really know. But I know every time I finish a plant in this, I rinse it off, sterilize it, and repot again. And every time I'm watering with my AB Leca fertilizer or a three part grow micro bloom, a bunch of these single part Fertilizers with roughly a 312 work great in Lekka. And if I'm to fill this cup with Lekka, it cost me about two bucks. Next up is perlite. Oddly enough, I ran out of perlite today. We usually have bags and bags of it and I'm just out of perlite. So it's a small cup, but you know what perlite is. It's essentially a volcanic rock that's mined and then it's heated up to expand about 20 times in its size. So it's a really small rock and it has great pores on it. it has So it has the ability for air pockets and water pockets to develop on the media so those roots can go and look for it. So it has like little reservoirs, like millions or hundreds of thousands of reservoirs per pot, depending on how many pores are within the media. And if you also watch this channel, you know I love to mix these two, Lekka and Perlite. And then I also reuse that mix. Perlite will break down a bit quicker than Lekka, it's less sturdy and it will kind of just split apart and kind of become dust eventually. And perlite for a cheap 15 or $16 bag for this whole cup is about two bucks. 
Again, on a similar scale, these are all similarly priced, and I'm sure you could find better or worse deals here or there. But perlite is a great additive. I have seen people propagate just in perlite, but finishing a plant to mother plant size, it doesn't have enough weight, even enough mass to hold the bottom of a plant down. Like a plant like this, for instance, it's in full LECA, six inch pot, and it's probably like seven, eight pounds, and that base weight of the LECA helps it stabilize and be able to stand straight up on something. It wouldn't work if this was in perlite. It'd probably work with pumice. It would definitely work with pawn. But again, those pieces are really, really small and I don't like the gap that's between them. Finally, the most popular of them all and all the rage on Facebook and propagation, Fluval Stratum. This is $3.22 per liter for this. So it's not that bad, but from what I've seen, it's semi-reusable. We use sometimes reuse it. I've had good success mixing it with perlite because I've found in small plants when they're really young, when you get this media wet, it effectively like consumes the leaves that touch it. So what I end up doing is taking the stratum, planting the plants, and then I'll cover the top with like a base layer of perlite as a, essentially like an insulator against rotting. So after root rot is the next thing that comes and takes down your plants is stem rot, leaf rot, and anything rots your plants and then comes back to the stem and eventually kills your entire plant. That's what we're worried about. And here is a variegated banana leaf that's thriving in that same mixture of a mix of stratum and perlite. The roots are thriving on this plant. They're wrapping around the bottom. And this is a variegated banana leaf. This actually produces variegated fruit. The bananas have stripes on them. I've never seen it in real life, but I've seen photos of it. It's crazy. Variegated banana leaves, beautiful plant, loves stratum. Fluval stratum, I have seen people grow pretty substantial sized plants. It's heavy enough to hold down the base of a plant so that's something to consider but again it does have trace amounts of minerals in it and I'm not sure how reusable it is it does kind of break it down and become like a like a sand but but again kind of being a control freak I want to know exactly what's in my media that's why my trouble with soil is I don't really know what's inside of it so I don't know what to feed it am I overfeeding am I underfeeding because I don't know what the baseline is the baseline with leca perlite pumice and other things even fluval stratum is pretty much next to zero pond you have the thing in there already but that's kind of a great anti-dummy proof system is the pond because it has everything in it. It's a semi-hydroponic media. Just add water. It's already pH to 7. And even pop it in their self-watering pot. It's a pretty straightforward system. The pot does feel kind of cheap. It looks nice, but does seem kind of cheap. I will check this out more and give you guys a review on this at some point. It essentially is like a pretty basic wicking system that brings the water up into the pond. It looks like that. At the end of the day, I look at all these different aggregates that I can have as different tools that I can mix together, trade off, use one for growing plants, use one for propagating plants, and just keep swapping things out and mixing things together and then finding the right mix for each plant also. We've talked about before how Monstera really prefers a bigger aggregate. That's why I love Leca for Monstera is because Monstera gets these thick cord-like roots which all these plants have, if you see adventitious roots, they get huge roots that kind of fish through the leca perfectly. And pond's probably great for something like philodendrons and other plants that have really fine root systems. Even anthuriums have pretty thick root systems. It's a very fine, almost like aquarium sand. This and the fluval, I don't prefer these for monstera, but probably for philodendron, they do great. And other thin rooted plants, probably hoyas. So out of all of these media, I'd really only grow completed plants in either leca or pawn or a combination of that with some of the other aggregates like perlite, maybe perlite and pawn, maybe pawn and leca, maybe a little stratum mix in. You can get really creative in creating these mixes. Let's get into the price of these. We're going to go by liter or quart. So first up is pawn, $3 per liter. Leca, two bucks a liter. Perlite, $2 a liter. Fluval stratum, $3.22 per liter. And we're doing volume for potting. The weight of stratum or pawn doesn't matter. It's just how much does it cost to fill up my potting container. Now these are all across Amazon. You can get bulker size, but I went around a $20 price point with high reviews and shipping with Prime. And if you guys would like, in March, we're coming to a bunch of different cities across the US with the Albo Show. Come and support us, come and talk to us, come meet me, come ask questions about plants, come get a variegated monster if that's what you'd like to do. So I hope you guys learned something about this comparison video. I'll try and do more growing experience videos coming up, especially with the pond. You know my experience with Leca, Perlite, things of that nature, but I'll go into things like pond, I'll go into rock wool, I'll go into all these different semi-hydroponic medias and even hydroponic medias that you can use to grow houseplants and other different plants. But if you did enjoy today's video, please like the video and consider subscribing since we make a new video about semi-hydroponics and houseplants every Saturday. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next Saturday. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.